I think you two should probably credit me for your success. Oh, right. I think right. along those lines, a lot of people are saying once I did commentary with Nikki and Caitlin on the same day, same day. I believe, That's true. That's true. at a WPT World wow. Championships cash games, then their career took off. So a lot of people, I'm not saying this, Which a lot of people are giving me credit for again that. falls back to me having brought <laughs> yeah. you in. Yeah. Right. Hey, welcome back to Ace Holes. I'm one of your hosts, Nikki Limo. And I'm your other host, Caitlin Kameski. And we are joined by basically the faces of Poker yeah. Go, No yeah. Gamble, No Future. Mm -hmm. The voices <laughs> that you hear in your head whenever you are paying attention to a Poker Go game and you're like, I just want to see the players. The beautiful, majestic voices <laughs> of... Rich, <laughs> like, like dark mahogany, but audio. Mm. Yeah, like a whiskey in a eardrum mm -hmm. uh very cheap whiskey <laughs> very <laughs> it's medium yeah. priced uh, i would say of uh jeffrey platt Hello. and uh brentimus hanks oh i like that <laughs> yeah. out your name a little. jeffrey yeah. yeah yeah that's me jeff. i go wow. by jeff don't know if you guys were i didn't aware. know if you were close enough but, but no yeah that was good you you can call me jeffrey okay that was Nikki. not in the right caitlin you cannot <laughs> yeah <laughs> 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 um, Jeff, you have a girlfriend now. What does she call you? <laughs> <laughs> Daddy. No comment. You can keep it moving. Oh, Let's okay. Get to the that questions. was that's all my questions. That's <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was it. That was it. That well, was it was a show. great show. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. So, you guys, um, we're here at the Poker Masters event. Yeah. Um, how, how you guys have been commentating the entire time? How's it been going? Has it been like super serious? Has have the people that won been the people you wanted to win? Well, Nikki and Caitlin, as you guys know, <laughs> we're right down the middle when it comes to broadcast, right? We are two true professionals. We don't root for A anybody. picture of neutrality. We don't root against anybody. Okay. Has it been serious? Yeah. This is one Super of our high serious. roller series. A lot of money on the line, some points in the race for that beautiful purple jacket. And I'm rooting for the Americans. Yep. So the, I, okay. I am there not like the, Jeff. I'm not very professional. You got an American flag uh, on your hat. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. America. Yeah. How far do you make it into each Masters before someone makes the Happy Gilmore joke? Purple jacket, green jacket, who gives a shit? Or am I the one? I think <laughs> you yeah, just it looks like about the eight. Yeah, the start the of the eight today. <laughs> yeah. But it's uh, a yeah. Good, I'm surprised you haven't used that before. I know. I I, I mean, you I can probably you need can to go back and rewatch the movie. I kind of forgot about that. Yeah. Wow, Aww. that's sad. Bob Barker was yeah. in it. It's like oh, my favorite yeah, line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're, you're going to use it today for sure. A hundred percent. For sure yeah. going to use it Consider today. that stolen. We have Thank to edit you. it a little you're bit. You're welcome. It's your favorite line. I'll credit it. <laughs> Not the tap. To the ace holes. Tap a room. Credit, nope, just credit gold to jacket, holes, green yeah. jacket. Who gives a yeah. shit? Yeah. Okay. The producer's going to love CBS that line. Yeah, that's going to go well on TV. It's a beautiful jacket. I wish I had one. It matches the couches of ace holes. We have purple velvet couches. If you are on our side, that um, everything would work and also the couches are purple um, but you guys have been commentating as a duo for yeah. a long time right you had a podcast together yeah. um, which you are still advertising well no it's gamble, turned no into a full-fledged cash game show I'm glad you mentioned that yeah. as a gift for inviting us onto your show we have these two patches. Very careful. Oh Take oh, very wow. delicate. Yeah. Oh my okay. god, those are gonna look so good on my titties. I'm gonna put them. You're gonna, you're I'm gonna, gonna have put to wear them. Purse? Uh, now. Oh, yeah. right now. Yeah. Anyway, back to me I mean, and Brent. Yeah. Uh, my audition for Poker Go was actually with this guy to my right. It was okay. about five years ago. Came in and met with Dan Gotti, our now. What's his title? Executive uh, producer, the, uh, senior vice president. Senior vice president. Maury S. Very Kadani, important the title. Hall yeah. of Famer, the yes. president of Poker Go. Yeah. I met with them. They said, we'd like to audition you. You know, we're just going to throw somebody in with you. And it was, it was one Brent Hanks. I'm pretty sure it was an audition for me as well. It was. I think it was more of an audition yeah. for you than it was for so me. So, Jeff, right. would you say that had you not been paired with someone you had so much chemistry with mm. that brought so much to the audition, maybe you wouldn't have been cast at all? No, I probably would have still gotten the gig. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, probably, probably would have still gotten. A it. lot of people have questioned. You know, do you think Jeff Platt would be successful mm. in this industry had it not been for me? Yeah, yeah. And Without, I yeah. think yeah. that Brent there's Hanks. a lot of merit to that. And I, to be honest, I'm not sure he would have made it. Yeah, probably still with the NBA holding the boom mic. <laughs> uh, which is what he was doing and but yeah you know I, you i'm really? happy to I, I actually think you're right i was holding the audio it wasn't like to the record the, the head, but it was kind of the under um but i was still asking some questions right some questions yeah, yeah, like there. a long form interview like they 
You get to bring the <laughs> yeah, microphone. Yeah, it, it wasn't the most glamorous of jobs. This is slightly more glamorous than on the set talking to you guys. Speaking of that, I do agree with Brent. I credit him for my success. I think you two should <laughs> probably credit me for your success. Oh, right. I think right. along those lines, a lot of people are saying once I did commentary with Nikki and Caitlin on the same day, on the same day I believe, that's true. That's true. at that's true. a WPT World wow. Championships cash games, then their career took off. So a lot of people, I'm not saying this, Which a lot of people are giving me credit for that. Which probably then again falls back to me having brought <laughs> yeah. you in. Yeah. And yeah. Right, right. So there's so this it's, chain it's, reaction. Yeah. Like a butterfly of effect greatness. Of, of greatness. Which again, yeah. we would never credit ourselves like that. No, but that's no. Just what a no. Lot of I wouldn't. Talk about. I would just say what everyone's yeah. saying. It was just us that did it. But, but now that you've brought it up, you know, maybe yeah. a little footnote in the eventual novel that we'll write about <laughs> <It's also laughs> right, our yeah. adventures. Um, great. So are there other, have there been any like, favorite events that you guys have commentated together where just like a lot of like fun stuff happened or you guys kind of treat everything the same i I think our favorite show to do is no gamble no future because that's kind of like our baby like we created he did most of it i have a small say say in that (laughs) i'm the father Um, so it's it's like that's our show so we have a ton of fun with that that's just a high stakes cash game where everybody just gambles it up. These are more serious. I personally really enjoy doing these tournaments and just showcasing the very best players in the world and watching them and commentating those. So it's all cool for us. I don't know what you would say. Don't think it's close. I, yeah, no gamma, no future because of everything you stated. And it's, there's such a, a for me, cash games are so more, uh, Fun. Fun? Yeah. yeah. I like, to, I like tournaments yeah. more. Are yeah. y'all the Just ones guy, uh, leading but, yeah. the charge on the game organization? Are you the ones actually booking the players and doing the... Yeah. You know, yeah, all that's, there. That's, that's, that's what I'm What's doing. What's that like? I mean, I just hear over and over again from people that have done it that it's the hardest job in poker. It can be. Uh, you just, you get used to it, honestly. People bail all the time last second, yeah. which is annoying, mm-hmm. but um, we have so many players that are local in Vegas or LA area that are, you know, happy to fly out and come play. Um, and if you give them <laughs> about a two month window ahead of time, hey, we're going to start filming, you know, then mm-hmm. and there. And then you stay on them and you have to constantly stay on them. But really, you don't know if you have a game until basically the day before a show. <laughs> Do you People have al- just alternates drop out all the time. And stuff? Yeah. And a lot of times, again, the alternates are just going to be Vegas based. And I can just say, hey, you know, need you here by two o'clock or three o'clock, whatever it is. And it seems to work out. But um, High Stakes Poker, another show we do. Jeff doesn't have that show because we use, you know, real talent there. Um, <laughs> fair, fair assessment. No, it, all jokes aside. But that show can be brutal because it, it's it, the games have to be obviously quite large. So you're playing 200, 400 at a minimum, 100K minimum buy-in. So when you lose players and it's the day before that show, that can be very difficult. Yeah, I imagine so. Yeah. Not everyone just has like a $100,000 no, buy-in right. lying no, around. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So luckily I've uh, formed a very good relationship with Andrew Robel. So whenever we're going to have a new season going forward, I you know call my man Robel and say, hey, let's uh, let's get to work and and he'll start grabbing some of his guys and then if I need to bring anybody in I'll, I'll help him out but he um, he has just been instrumental for the last couple of seasons oh that's awesome yeah. within the last year y'all had like two marquee events that you were at the center of uh, the first that comes to mind is cash of the Titans which was mm-hmm. part of no gamble no future which yeah. was the million dollar game the first one of the year and then also the uh, game where you sort of capitalized on the conflict between Berkey and airball and you put them in the same room and you got Tilly and I just thought that 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 stream was like phenomenal. What was it like, like swinging <laughs> for the fences and like creating these marquee moments to capitalize on some drama and <laughs> create start, an event for poker? I'll start with the first one you mentioned, which was Cash of the Titans. That is uh, kudos to Eric Person. He had this concept in mind of uh, pretty much exactly what you saw, this this three-day cash game affair where there's a, a side pot of you know half a million, six hundred thousand dollars, where the biggest winner is going to collect that on top. So, person did a lot of the the legwork there, got players to agree to come in and do it, um, and that made my life quite easy in that regard. The other show, High Stakes Poker, the the live edition, was somehow it just worked, where all these players agreed to do it, uh, come in and play live for the first time ever on that show, including Matt Berkey. 
which I couldn't believe he did say yes to, considering the drama with Airball and yeah. you know Lin G was kind of jumping mm-hmm. in on there. Um, Just seemed like everybody would have ganged up on him. Yeah, and then Doug Polk came into the, yeah. into the fray. Just so everybody it was, that was involved, and then it Rob was, Young, who will just roast anybody. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was one of my favorite shows ever. It's kind of strange too because you either just absolutely hated it or you loved it. Yeah, there was no middle. Ground. I think that's a sign of the of success. Like, yeah, do you want to yeah. like make a bunch of milk toast things? It's the same thing over and over again, or do you want to try to find something new to ignite a new audience and new excitement? I don't know. I was a fan. I know some yeah. people yeah. thought like, oh, the cackling or the laughter. I'm like, yeah, because everyone's awkward as ass right now. Yeah. It's awesome. Like, yeah. pay attention. Read between the lines. This is amazing. And, and oh yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Don't there. you think we want heroes and villains? Yeah, yes. I think that's going to yeah. help our game immensely. So when we get somebody here, especially at a tournament final table, it's it's very rare to get the quote unquote villain. I think right. the closest yes. we come is Sean Perry, you know, somewhat of a polarizing figure. But we love that. We want you to watch whether you love this guy or hate this guy or whoever like is comes on the stage. We want you to have an interest yes. in them, whether it's one way or the other. I think yeah, and the gift you us. got this summer was Cabril. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Which is why I no. love that. We we. And some of you, y'all K. got a little bit of criticism for how yeah. you responded in the moment. What was it like responding to some of the negativity you got personally? I know you specifically, Brett, got a lot of, Brent got a lot of negativity. Uh, he always does. You get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, I don't know. I, it, I didn't really take anything personal. Um, and I honestly didn't see too much negative i guess twitter is just doing its thing but, i guess i spent uh, too much time on reddit researching yeah. oh for reddit i haven't even gone there <laughs> oh, yeah, wait, that's don't, dangerous don't, don't, don't dangerous. Go there. No, oh i haven't been on reddit they're not yeah. your fans i, will, I think oh. i will never go on reddit <laughs> so yeah i've just heard so many horror stories of like just toxic oh um, i gotta check it out reddit i only reddit, go but. on it when i'm prepping for interviews and i just like <laughs> find the meanest things that anyone has said about our guests and then i ask them about it <laughs> <laughs> The biggest critique, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we got, I think, on the Cabral broadcast was not even coming close to touching any sort of allegations that came Mm -hmm. towards him through cheating. And that's just like not what we can do on our broadcast. You know, this goes out to CBS Sports. Right. Of course. There's no reason for us to just dive into that. I mean, it's like, oh, I think he did X, Y, and Z, and this guy thinks he did X, Y, and Z. We just, we don't touch that. Yeah. We're just on the action right down the middle, and we don't dive into that I yeah mean, you but it's hard there when uh, every single player at the table is covering their cards and it's like right <laughs> and, and we kind of touched on that like mm-hmm. the players wanted to protect themselves versus cabral completely fair to say that's what they were actually doing you can see that just as far as any allegations are concerned we just if you just think just about major in sports you. in general too right yeah. i mean uh th- there are certain players in in various leagues the nfl where alleged incidents happened and lawsuits are taking place the the broadcasters aren't talking about that yeah, yeah. They're, they're not talking about the allegations you know the, it's for yeah, yeah, yeah 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 exactly yeah and you know i'm not trying to go to court yeah you know i don't want to get sued by this cabral that's why i cheer for the americans you know <laughs> i'm gonna bring it back uh, no yeah so that that's why we cheer for comedy we, we don't try to dig into smart um drama or yeah. pick us ta- we don't pick sides we'll yep. we'll bring up certain things and kind of like you know poke at poke at it but we won't like make a, a hard opinion on anything or yeah. or uh, draw lines but uh, going back to heroes and villains that's why I absolutely love Phil Hellmuth like yeah. he's always been my favorite to watch and it, yeah like you know there's been times where he can be extreme um, but I also just think that if everyone was the same, if everyone was just so polite and etiquette like it's not as fun to watch It it's really like fun to see him get pissed or like there's a spot where you know he's gonna blow up and like get pissed at somebody <laughs> like you're we're there we're waiting for it love him or hate him like we're there for it i think helmuth is unique where the majority of the audience is not tuning in for he may disagree with this by the way for mm-hmm. for greatness you're tuning in to see if he's going to go yeah. nuts on somebody <laughs> to see if he's going to explode yes. and do what you're you know what you're talking about that that's what that's why he's the poker brat. That's what made him who he is. You know, it just so happened that he, you know, has won 17 bracelets along the way, and that's uh, yeah. remarkable. But I'm not there to watch, you know, the best poker play imaginable. I want to see Helmuth be the brat. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's it. A hundred percent. That's his brand. Um, well, Jeff, you've been, like, hitting the tables a lot. Yeah, a little bit. Like, I feel like we've saved a lot of electric bill 
by dimming the lights so much. Yeah, <laughs> like go. you have been final tabling. Like what's that been like? You've been grinding. It's been cool. Yeah. I mean, it, it's worked out perfectly with our schedule. So when we don't broadcast, I'm able to play some tournaments, whether online or live and, uh, and vice versa. When we do broadcast, I don't play. It's, it, it makes the game a little bit easier, of course, when you just your job is to watch the best players in the world. So naturally, you're going to pick up on some things. I get to sit by an excellent analyst when I work with Maria. <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, but you, you just pick up so much. In your job, I like to study the game also. And fortunately, all of that is translated uh, into some result. Yeah, He's yeah. also cheating. He likes I'm not cheating. <laughs> it's, no, no, no. So it's clear. T- talk yes. about Cabral. Oh, yeah. Is there a particular person you may have kind of uh, so you're emulating. picked up some, some stuff from or, or like maybe a mixture of players that have inspired you? I think it's a mixture because I think you can take some of what these guys do and apply those very basic concepts to the fields that like, you know, we play in the four hundreds, the six hundreds, the one Ks of the world. So these guys are all going bananas, right? They they are world class and and they are trying to find a path to victory every single hand. And I think a lot of players in the fields that we all play with don't think that way. Mm -hmm. So I've I've tried to change my game to just try to apply a ton of pressure to my opponents. And I think that that has worked out. So kind uh, of like a mindset best. thing, like a yeah. reframing it to not like, okay, now I just got to make the money. I just got to make the money. But right. like, I want to win and each pot leads me a, a step closer to winning. And it's going to be that much easier for that to happen because so many other players are thinking, I just want to make the money. I just don't want to put my chips at risk, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I think it's been a big mindset shift over the last couple of years. And again, it's... You've always been out. a psycho at the table. <laughs> yeah. like, that's part of your nature. Yeah. That uh, I don't think anyone knows that. Maybe they do now, especially uh, Aram Zobian played in one of our events uh-huh. that Jeff went deep in online the night prior. And he came in and he asked me, he goes, man, your boy Jeff uh, really went after it the other night. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, yeah, you know, yeah, that's what he does. He goes, I... Like, he just have it every time. I was like, I doubt it, man. <laughs> he's like, wow. I, like, so he's not weak, tight, passive. I was like, no, he's an absolute psychopath, man. Like, it's just how <laughs> he's wired. For some reason, that's what people think. Like, oh, the broadcaster, yeah, it must be like, yeah, super tight. It must always have it. Yeah. And so. I think that's helped a little bit. Yeah. Now you know what it's like to play as a woman. (laughs) 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 We get that so much. (laughs) She must have it again. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Always have it. That's why I feel like ladies tournaments are harder because like everyone's so used to like being bluffed at that they don't fold. Like and no one folds. They're like we're holding the line to the river. (laughs) (laughs) It's so funny. Um, But you you guys started. uh, Jeff, you have a degree in broadcast journalism yes and you didn't start From usc with, go trojan yeah okay fine on. You. um you didn't start with commentating poker it was right a different i was in sports reporting for a while i was working as a local sports reporter in san antonio which is where i was holding the boom mic for greg popovich and my contract he loves was interviews up there. that must have been oh fun. yeah it was <laughs> it, you know it helped me in the long run become a better interviewer and for those of you who don't know pop from the spurs is like very notorious for effectively hating reporters and interviews and all sorts of different <laughs> questions. It's very hard Understandable, to get a good response Understandable, to be honest. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that helped me develop uh, better questions. And then when my contract was coming up there, I figured if I like sports reporting and I also like to play poker, why don't we try to merge these two passions together, as corny as that may sound. And so I reached out to, to Dan Gotti and got to talk with him and with Maury, and one thing led to another, an audition with – this gentleman to my right, and and here we are today. I've been very lucky. And here you are. And here and, we are. and you guys uh, not only commentate here, but you're doing stuff with the Champions Club now yeah. in Texas. How's that going? I'll go there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Amazing. They, they Roy and Isaac um, are doing something very special down in Texas. It all started in California for them, then Florida, and now Texas. So Champions Club is sort of their adventure. Um, we have been fortunate enough to forge a friendship, a great friendship with these two, and they, they come to us for you know their bigger shows and whatnot. Uh, most recently, the Cash Festival series where I'll help build lineups um, down there, and then we're airing them on Poker Go. 
So that's their distribution channel. Um, some pretty big things to come at their property, including potentially, uh, well, we'll drop the, the spoiler here. Uh, ooh, the PGT ooh, headed okay, to exclusive. Texas in May. I really hope this is recording now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go so ahead and say that again. Hopefully this comes into fruition, but we're, we're looking to take the PGT to Texas in 2024. That's a part of the plan. Mm-hmm. Um, they're excited about it. We're excited about it. So we're trying to work out the details there and the dates as to when that'll occur. But um, yeah, I think that they're going to be doing some they already are doing great things in poker and they will get bigger and expand and we're just fortunate to be along for the ride and they treat us and every single player so well whether you play their one three games or whether you're one of their quote unquote high rollers it's a great setup there it's a hotel like just right above the poker room with nice Mm -hmm. new renovated rooms their chef chef connie is from a world-class restaurant um in dallas and she is absolutely amazing i think she's why brent really likes going down i there. can't wait we're going back at the end of november early december nice uh and i'm just looking forward to the food you know also it hit me earlier in the week there's there's two locations that i can think of that you go to this spot and the entire staff and crew it's all about poker and nothing but poker one is here uh-huh. inside the poker go studio and I think Champions Club is very similar in that regard. That's true. There's nothing to do. Yeah. You're going there for poker. And if you love poker, that's the place to be. You can stay there. You eat well. You play games all day. If you want to go explore the Houston area, you can do it. You want to go explore the Vegas area, of course, you can do it. But it, there's sort of the mecca of poker here in Vegas and in the studio. And then they're doing something special down at Champions Club in Houston. Now, Jeff hit on a point that I think is just like so special about Texas poker is how egalitarian it is because of the hourly model. The one two player yeah. is just as, as valuable as the yeah. high roller player. They're not making any more money off of a 2550 than they are from the one two game. If anything, the one two player that is there daily for longer is more valuable. So I think that's just such a special thing about Texas poker in general yeah, I didn't that know like that. everybody is of equal value to to the staff and to the owners. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. You guys have to get down to Champions, especially, no offense, but a star of Texas poker <laughs> yeah, needs I mean. to be there in Houston at Champions Club, don't you Let's think? Let's go, yeah. Let's yeah. Go. I mean, do you, Count have, me you in. have plans uh, late November, early December? Do you guys have... We're going to San Diego with Run, do, Run Good, but... Oh, I'm, you are? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah. You're going there too, aren't you? Not to the San Diego oh. one. Okay. Um, Are you going to Kansas City? I'll be in great. Kansas City. No, not okay. to the Kansas City one. That was my very first Run Good stop. Have you guys done a Run Good? Yes, I've done before? Tulsa. I've done oh, right. Council Bluffs. Done okay. I love working with Run Good. Tana and Haley yeah, they're awesome. make such a great tour. I love the people that come out to play Run Good events. Um, I always have a Greyhound with me. It's like nothing <laughs> that serious. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm super Run looking good. forward to have it. I've, I've never been one, okay. to one, but I've, I've seen We're everyone's posts and everyone just Gettner. raves about about them, so I, I've gotten a lot of FOMO from <laughs> looking at every, everyone, and I'm excited to to try that one out. And then I think at the beginning of December, there's a WPT meetup game we might be going to. Right. But um, so you're out on Houston. Um, that's what you're yeah, getting at. Like um, so like hit us we up. Just like uh, uh, just want to check with our uh, check Mine. our books. Okay. But yeah. we are totally down to come to Champions. At, okay. Yes. And, and I'll hound you every time. Point. Yes. Yeah. Please. We'll get please and thank you. The invitations really going. Another thing I wanted to talk to y'all about is how the state of poker media is really in the subscription model. You guys are like the big stars talent of Poker Go. We all felt, most of us that are in poker today, we fell in love with poker watching ESPN coverage. Do you see a path to getting poker back on television? And do you think anybody's really motivated to even do that with the state of how streaming services are? I will, I think handle that so first of all poker's still on television mm-hmm. it's on cbs sports all the world series episodes are there all mm-hmm. of these majors poker masters pgt uh our show no game no futures on vice so television for poker is actually bigger and greater than it's ever been oh, uh, okay. distribution wise so i don't know if it's, me, it's sort of like, <laughs> i don't know if it's this thing because it's off espn and no one knows yeah. what you know Apparently CBS Sports is, but uh, Mm -hmm. it's primetime coverage pretty much every day of the week right now for the World Series of Poker. In fact, the main event episodes are airing right now. Okay. Typically for our time, they're starting around 6 p.m. at night. Um, So East Coast, that's what, 9 p.m., I guess. Is it a three-hour difference? Yeah, I I forget how time works. Um, But yeah, it's it's never been broader distribution-wise. On top of that, there's also... Various networks such as Pluto, Sling, Hulu, um, you name it, poker's going to be there. Not Hulu, Fubo, sorry. Mm. Um, 
Fubu? You can find it f- Fubu? F- Fubu? Not for no. us, bias? Fubu? Yeah, for us, bias? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's Fubu. Clothing line? F- Fubu. F-U-B-O? Fubu, yeah. Fubu. Fubu. Yeah. Yeah. Fubu. Yeah. Okay, F-U-B-O. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fubu. yeah. Fubu. 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 Look it up. <laughs> okay. But anyway, it's, <laughs> it, it is everywhere. Um, I miss ESPN, of course. I, I, you know, who doesn't miss yeah. ESPN? But I, I can't tell you the intricacies of that deal. I'm just not that familiar with it. But CBS Sports had a major appetite for poker, mm-hmm. hence why all of the coverage is, you know, has landed there. And I, I think it's a great question. Something that I'm sure Brent and the crew at Poker Hill really thinks about. But. It, there are two totally different landscapes. If this were 15 years ago, yeah, we would just really, really want and really, really need to be on TV on a big time cable network. That would be our only chance at success. Today, though, the game has changed. Yeah. Like cable mm-hmm. subscriptions have dropped significantly. Every sort of streaming outlet that you can think of has picked up these subscribers. So I think the dream is to combine both right that you keep that television audience and then you have the streaming audience as well i think that's something poker go has really started to accomplish so it's so easy to think oh well it was on espn and it was such a big deal but that that was just the way of the world back yeah then. so many shows were such a big deal ratings wise it kind of has yeah. fallen off on cable and i think you want to be able to merge every platform that you can it's like not the same formula of success that it was back then yeah, yeah it's a yeah, totally, yeah, totally different totally animal yeah. and there's yeah. streams now just everywhere it's not just what we're doing in here right mm-hmm. i mean hustler just massive on youtube they're going five days out of the week uh champions club you mentioned them they're streaming yeah. five days out of the week they're, everywhere you look there is some sort of poker stream going on the content itself from this industry has also never been greater uh, and it, it's pretty incredible as to, as to how this game is booming as far as you everywhere you look, you're just going to find poker. Yeah, I'm really excited to see that grow more. I, yeah. I feel like yeah. there's been a, especially with the poker vloggers and like yeah. them getting it, like a lot more poker content getting into various nooks and crannies of social media. I feel like it's bringing in like a whole new set of eyeballs and audience that especially um, I was talking to like kids high school age kids like 17 18 uh, ish with that, that like can't wait to to play like when they're 21 and like you you know the who knows like how many will end up you know aging into being able to like play and where they'll be at now is the time in ace holes where we play a game and this game is actually round two ashley sleep did the first one but with poker vloggers but this is round two of a game we like to call tiny faces big cards what we're gonna do is show you tiny little face parts of people who have been playing at the Poker Master Series that you've been commentating yeah. about over the past week. Oh, and um, you're gonna try to name who the tiny face part belongs to. We have their names written down yep. on these cards. These are the choices you can choose from so you don't have to pull from thin air. Okay. But um, when I show you the face part, the first person to hold up the correct name gets a point. Got it. At the end, keep hold. So we're against hold each your other. Card. Yes, yeah. you're competing yeah. so against each other. The first one to grab the right card. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, the first okay. person to grab the right card. A better angle. Okay. Will win. Perfect. Are you ready for the yeah. first tiny face part? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's very tiny. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can I can tell you what face part it is. It's this is a nose. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you very helpful? much. Now, yeah. Now we're good. Yeah. Um, okay. Is this all we get, or are you gonna this, keep making it a little? Is, bit? No, no. This is no, all. That's you, what this you is get. all you get. Okay. <laughs> no chances. You think Jonathan Little? I'm gonna go with the Jonathan Little. Okay. Mm. Jeff, uh, any, any guesses? I think it's our new guy. Oh, a lot shoot. of Thomas it's Austin. True. That is Jeff is correct. correct. No way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby. Jeff's I wish on the I could. board. So does he remove oh, no. that card because he's off the board? It was this picture. Yeah. yeah. This, no, I can't believe you didn't get that. It's wow. this nose from wow. that picture. Yeah. Yeah. Can you yeah. can you pronounce that name for us? Yes. So that Vladis te- Thomasowskis. Ooh, beautiful. Thank you. Vladis Thank you. He just Skouskis. got off the plane in Crete. All right, guys. Okay. Wow, you cheated. <laughs> Wait, what? I didn't even get to look. Jeff, do you have an alternate? I recognize those uh, sideburns. Yeah. I recognize <laughs> those sideburns. That is Ren Lin. Is that Ren Lin? That is Ren Lin. Yeah. 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 That is Ren Lin. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is hair. Uh, you grab? Brent says Andrew Lichtenberg. Lucky Chewy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you both agree on that, but yeah, I, Brent, I was Brent gets the point. Maybe like some yeah. Chris Brewer. Brent gets in it, the point. It absolutely. Is. Does that mean I'm up two to one now? Yes, yes. you well, are. The, the yeah. second yeah. one is very under debate. 
All right. Yes, Darren Brent, Elias. you are on a roll. <laughs> oh my Darren god, Elias. that is the so beautiful mouth of Darren heart. Elias. They've been friends for a long time. They know okay. each other very well. These eyebrows. <laughs> okay, you say. I'm, so, I'm going Zobian. Okay. I'm going Chino Reem. It, it is yes, Chino, Chino correct. Reem. It is Chino Reem. Okay, Chino. Here we I had to go. take yeah. the other one. All right, little mouth part. Look at those lips. Pretty kissable, right? Jeff's going Alex Foxes. Very kissable human being. Yep. Jeff's regretting his choices. I have to guess somebody. <laughs> it's you not guess. Foxen. Can, can you use we the don't same know, person we don't know. twice? I haven't yeah. said. I haven't can you use the same person twice? Or you, you, you can, can do whatever you want. Okay, I'm going back to Chewy. Okay, both of you are wrong. Oh, this was Brock Wilson. Oh, Brock Wilson. I, Brock. I was going to go So Brock. sorry, Brock Wilson. Yeah. All right. What the hell is that? In that is um. <laughs> that's a nose? That's a nose. That is a nose. That is a nose. You're going Zobian? I mean, I'll just... We haven't seen Gary the Goose Baldwin yet, so I'll just guess Baldwin. Jeff is correct. God! Are you guys tied yet, or is Brent three. ahead by one? It's three, okay. Three. Yeah. All right. Who's ear? Oh. Oh, I got it. Oh, I, I, I had my hand. <laughs> check the tape. <laughs> that, Jeff, I think, had I his even hand said on it. it. No, I grabbed well, it. You came I was on just top. No, what, I was back? on it before. Do you guys have replay available? I guarantee you go to the tell the tape. I'm on it. We will replay it in post. But um, the, the referee's call is probably gonna be what stands on the field right now. Uh, and I, I said, I said Jeff, but I don't. They're fighting over the wrong answer. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Jonathan, Little. Jonathan Little, where is he? Does he have burns? <laughs> oh, I know who oh, this wait, is. Oh wait, that's no, it's not him. No, wait, what? what? You guys, one more guess each. One more guess each. He's guessed like three times. Oh, it's Vladis again. I'm gonna go Vladis again. Jeff, what's your final Have we guessed answer? everybody? You get the final answer. Uh, my you final can, answer you is. That ear? I have noticed I guess... a lot of ears. <laughs> God, we're so bad at this. Yeah, I'm. I'm sticking with Vladis. I guess. Vladis I guess because of the hat, I'll go with Baldy. No, he only wore a bucket hat. And was Jeff is correct. Yeah, it's Eric, Eric Baldwin. Baldwin. What hat is that? <laughs> it's the black A's hat. <laughs> Oh, that's the ace hat. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, chin. Two more, two more. Chin. I mean, he would wear a collared shirt. Only Jonathan wears collared shirts, right? Oh, great point. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go Jonathan Little. It is yeah. Jonathan Little. Yeah, he's a collared shirt. Right. Yes, good job. Nice, nice one. Did that put you in the lead? Okay. That's Ren. Yep. Oh, wait, I already guessed sure? Yeah, no, because I, I recognize oh, these you're, ears. Used, I'm not, you used I'm, a guess. I might pull out of that one. You did use yeah. a guess. <laughs> Big pull-out That's guy. Cool. Me, uh, <laughs> no, no, you have two kids. I don't know. I don't three. 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 Oh. three. Yeah, sure, that's oh, your Brock. strategy. Yeah, that's really not your strength. Oh, God. Didn't you want to get Brock? Is it Brock oh, or, but, or Ren Lin? No. But there are no yeah. glasses there, yeah. It's bad guess. Who's the last ear you guys fought over? Yeah, this I mean, one should be the easiest. I guess I'll just go Foxen because we haven't used him yet. It is Foxen. It is Foxen. It's like a process of oh, this is, you got You guys got to recognize that. You He's thought you little, thought this ear was Foxen. On the Foxen one. But the, the fo okay, this ear. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah let me I show went, you. I want Foxen there. That I is, want it's proof a very, of that one. Uh, yeah. Does that mean I win, by the way? Yeah, Brent had a commanding lead of this game. Yeah, that was the last one. Um, so here we go. We're gonna revert. So this was the this is the ear in yeah. question. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Still um, questioning. It's from this picture. There it of is. Sir yeah, Alex, there it is. Alex Foxen. Yeah, I recognize those lobes. WSOP <laughs> bracelet winner it's from and it's poker it's master. It's an old picture though, so I think. It's an. I will it's protest. The same you ear, old ear picture. Job? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You guys, thank They're you so much expensive. for playing. Thank Brent, you, you are thank our you. winner. Um, as a debate. winner, we would like to hear a speech, winner's speech, mm -hmm. inspire yeah. the people out there who may be competing in future events of Tiny Faces Big Heart. Yeah, yeah, know your lobes, uh, get into the nostrils, and uh, <laughs> check those lips. I think the quickest one you got was um, Darren Elias. 
No, the quickest was, one he got was, was the Renlin. one I didn't see. Just still protesting. By I the also, way, for what Renlin. it's worth, was the first one on the Foxing card that, that he's going to. Can you guys just that check that just for, just for yeah. even yeah. though we're in a wrong Oh no no no! no. Oh, I believe who you on actually, that one, but like who got there? Yeah, okay, I was definitely on it. First. Yeah, we he need to know who guessed incorrectly first. It's very important. He wanted to know which hat. It was this hat. For yeah, it's the black ace hat. Yeah, yeah. Oh. For the screwed ear. that one up, but it's. Not, I, I was oh, thinking was of the hats he wore in here mm. in our final table, and it was not that hat. Yeah, you so. guys didn't you have me. any pictures of I him got here, got. so this was all. Oh. Like, yeah, you wow. guys. Yeah, I was yeah. like, wow, Credit he's the, he was the only one that didn't have a picture on the, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the table. Of got, like, got. Oh, got, man. Got. Gary the Goose balled them. Anyway, great speech, Jeff. Thank you. I mean, not Jeff. Sorry. I'm, great I'm speech. Yeah, you guys. They look so similar. They look so similar. We get that a lot. Yeah. Um, Thank you guys. Congrats yeah. on all of your, both of your successes. Uh, yeah, the Champions Club. I'm very congrats excited on your to failures see that. too. Congrats Thank you. Because that's how it, you <laughs> get one step closer <laughs> right. to success. You fail upward in the family. Yes. Yeah. Right. yes. Um, we appreciate you being here today. Hopefully, um, this interview got recorded. We were having problems with our soundboard earlier, but I'm pretty sure it did. If not, um, you'll never know. So never know. And it was good to just, you know, we do it again. Yeah. Right? You know, we get this out of the way. We get the, you know. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully yeah. next time we interview you, you can be in purple jackets. Yeah. Doubtful. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on hey, that. Hey, hey, yeah. we'll work on some belief. <laughs> so, uh, well, thank you for being here thank and uh, good luck today with all of the stuff that you got going on with commentary. We'll be, we'll be tuning in and you can check out the links in the description to Poker Go and everything that they have going on. You really should check it out. It is like the highest level of poker being played. It's really, really fun to watch um, as, you know, an aspiring Maybe an aspiring Poker high stakes rest. player. We, we don't know. Maybe it's in our future if we yeah. gamble. Jacket. I'm going to get enough. the purple jacket. No gamble, no yep. future. All right. And I'm going to do the Happy Gilmore joke when I put it yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.